I'm pretty sure this is going to execute a cutscene, but we're going to try to make the quack. tap. I can do it, you quack. snake. Quack. I'm back, better than week. ever. Make it a no DQ this time. And to make sure that we don't get a repeat of last week, Thank I'm you. going to make it a non disqualification match. That's perfect. I'm going to fuck him up. You can't do that. We had a match last week. That's it. End of story. He's the GM, mate. He can do what he wants. Hey, listen up. I'm the general manager of this show. That's what I just fucking said. What is going on YouTube Universe? This is Zira, and welcome back to Zira's Retro Rewind, the series where we throw it back to the days of yesteryear. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we are continuing our playthrough of WWE Smackdown vs. Raw. Sit back, relax, it is game time, and we are kicking things off in a big way. Because having successfully defended our Intercontinental Championship in yesterday's episode, we are now officially challenging Randy Orton for the World Heavyweight Championship. This is going to be huge. I hope you guys are keen. I am so ready to get my hands on a second title. It's not funny. Hello, Mr. Bischoff. What do you got for me? I've got to say, I'm really impressed with your performance so far on Raw. You've earned yourself a non-title match against the World Heavyweight Champion. Thank you very and much, you sir. tonight, you'll have a title shot next week. How do you feel about that? How do you think I fucking feel about that? That sounds great. I'm definitely ready for a title shot. Why can't I have it right now? It's time I got what was coming to me. Again, it's another Jericho fucking decision, right? We gotta go with this one. We gotta maintain well, that heel persona. Last time I checked, I was the general manager. So you'll have to do it my way or the highway. So get ready to hit the ring. You're up next. Fantastic. So we've got a card where Chris Benoit and A-Train lost to Kane and Christian. Rhino lost to Ric Flair. And we've got Randy Orton in the main event. Stacked card for Monday Night Raw, ladies and gentlemen. Here comes your intercontinental and soon-to-be world heavyweight champion, ladies and gentlemen. Chris Jericho. Our first feud, if you missed yesterday's episode, I do urge you to go check it out if you did, but we feuded with Shawn Michaels, HBK. It was the perfect way to kick this entire series off. And we managed to defeat Michaels in an ultimate submission match where in the space of 15 minutes, I managed to make him tap out 10 times. Huge main event to wrap up Backlash. And now we've earned the right to take on Randy Orton, who was ironically the secondary superstar I was contemplating doing a playthrough for for this particular game. But in the end, I wanted to be able to win the championship and chase it instead of defending it straight out the gate. And I thought, what better way to become world heavyweight champion than players who I revere as the GOAT. But here comes Randy Orton. And this right here, ladies and gentlemen, probably some people may agree with me, some might disagree with me, but I think this is peak Randy Orton right here. During his legend killer phase, I feel he was at the peak of his powers. The Viper Randy Orton is well up there as well. I just really loved how he went about it during this particular point in time. Especially the entrance music. Just the smugness he ran around with. I feel it was the complete package. This, this created Randy Orton. This whole run made him a household name. Good evening and welcome oh, we're going to kick it off with a shoving contest. I bet you I lose this because I'm terrible at this shit. Uh oh. He's gonna push me flat on my fucking ass. Nope, he's messed up. Randy Orton is so full of himself, it makes me sick. 
I'm actually quite surprised that Randy Orton is a clean... Oh, shit! As I was trying to say before I was fucking curb stomped. I'm very surprised that Randy Orton is slated as a clean superstar to kick things off. You'd think he would be within the dirty realm like Chris Jericho. to deal as much torso damage as possible if we have any chance of winning this match. No, you don't. Come out here, Randy. These guys are writing a wrestling textbook in the Not only can we deal a little bit of damage out here, but we can build up our dirty meter as well, which is going to go a long way as a backup plan. For those of you at home who might be unfamiliar with what I'm referring to, there's a clean meter and a dirty meter, as you can see underneath both Randy Orton and Chris Jericho's names. As I interact with the barricade, my dirty meter is filling up. And once full, I can execute a low blow that is undetectable by the referee and does a big amount of damage. I've won one match with it so far. Rhino was the, uh, the poor victim. To get the uh, to get the ball sack punched on, and I think the clean one from memory gives you invulnerability for a certain period of time. I could be wrong though. I'm almost certain, regardless of the outcome of this match, if we go for the pin, I don't think we win. I think a cutscene ends up robbing us of the win and prolongs the storyline. Which again, I mentioned it in yesterday's episode and I'll mention it numerous times throughout this series, I'm sure. The scripting of the storylines and just the career modes in general of the SmackDown vs. Raw games were peak WWE, in my opinion. None of the 2K games have really captured what these older games delivered story-wise. Which is a shame. No, you weren't supposed to drop down. Uh-oh! Oh, come on! How about a little sportsmanship, for God's sakes? Well, you're not getting sportsmanship from me, mate. I'm not going to make that. Uh oh. Get off me, you clown. Get up, you bastard. How far are these superstars willing to go to get the win here tonight? Man, I'd pay money to see these two guys go at it again, JR. Fuck! I can't afford him to deal too much damage to my head because if he hits an RKO on me, I am fucked. Good old limb manipulation. Randy Orton at its finest. What I loved about these older games as well is the soundtrack playing in the background while we're actually fighting. I can watch these guys go at it all night, JR. Some people would probably argue that it takes away from the fighting experience, but I think it really added to the old school arcade feel. Fucking cop that, you bastard. Fuck. Oh, I might be in trouble here. I've never seen superstar with more potential. Remind me to never try and step between these guys. This is going to get him an RKO.
The arrogance of that head slap is so fucking good. Is that going to be enough for me to secure the win? We need to set him up in the middle of the ring. The official certainly has his hands full in this matchup. You might want to close your eyes, JR. I think this one's about to get ugly. Here we go. Eddie? I'm pretty sure this is going to execute a cutscene, but we're going to try to make the bastard tap. fucking knew it. It was too good to be fucking true. You fucking snake bastard. Would you look at that king? He can't even stand up. Yeah, I'm a bit fucked. I don't even think he knows where he is, JR. Fucking dog. I'm back. After what happened in this match last than week, ever. I decided to make another preliminary title match. And once again, if the challenger wins, he gets his title shot. Make it a no DQ this time. And to make sure that we don't get a repeat of last week, Thank I'm you. going to make it a non-disqualification match. That's perfect. I'm going to fuck him up. Hey! You can't do that. We had a match last week. That's it. End of story. He's the GM, mate. He can do what he wants. Hey, listen up. I'm the general manager of the show, and I can do whatever I want. That's what I just fucking if you said. Like it, you can hand me that belt back right now and hit the showers. That is what they call in the business, Randy Orton. Eat a bag of shit. Tajiri beat Chuck Palumbo in the opener. The mid-card saw Michaels, Rhino, and Edge lose to the team of Kane, Ric Flair, and Batista. And I've got myself a no-disqualification match with Randy Orton in the main event. Oh, Stacy Keebler. She's got legs! And knows how to use them! Test the strength this time. We've seen this one go down before. But again, these mini games made the SmackDown vs. Raw series so unique. This whole series, this line of games did so much right for wrestling video games as a whole. It's a shame that what we're getting now is what I feel a shadow of what the games could have been and what they used to be. I'm going to let him escape. And I'm going to get outside the ring. It's time for me to deal out some fucking pain. Come on, you bastard. Boof! Fucking throw the chair at you, you bastard. These superstars continue to size each other up. I don't think this one's about winning or losing anymore. Oh well. A train? What the fuck? What's this big hairy bitch doing out here? Randy Orton seems to have enlisted some help. I can throw you into the stairs so I can use them. Randy Orton's a third generation superstar. And he was Good old Matt Bloom, hey? A train himself. 
You know what, ladies and gentlemen? A train coming out and interfering in this match has prompted me to pose a question of the day. Considering, you know, he has been retired for a very long time. I'm curious to know at home, out of all the retired superstars we've had, whether it be through through death and forcing retirement, or just, you know, retiring because they've had enough of the business or injury, whatever the case may be, inactive superstars that were once active, if you could bring one of them back and have another WWE run, who would it be and why? Comment down below. A-Train is definitely far from my fucking list because, need I remind you guys, it's this bastard that cost Mandy Rose her job. That's right. You heard me. Apparently it was Matt Bloom who found Mandy's nudie nudes online, whether it be the photos or the videos. Which I find funny because if that is true, the only way he would have been able to find them is if he was a paid, you know, subscriber of hers to look at them. And if that's the case, that's a bit of hypocrisy in action because it's alright for him to be a paid member and look at the photos, but then he goes and reports them? Very strange circumstances, but I still think it's a bit of bullshit that uh, Mandy got fired from NXT. I wasn't a big Mandy Rhodes fan in the beginning, but the run she was having on NXT was something else. And her running Toxic Attraction was so good. Now we've obviously seen that crumble to bits. I just think with the history that WWE has had with certain superstars, especially like Mickey James was able to get dicked in porn videos before she was hired, but Mandy Rose isn't allowed to capitalize on showing her tits on camera. Come on now. It was perfectly okay for all those superstars back in the day to pose nude for Playboy, huh? Prob oh, what the fuck? Oh man, look at the confidence, JR. He's just staring at the tricep. He's taking him to the woodshed. I'm busting you open, you fuck. We ain't finishing this match until you've. Yes! I was just about to say, until you've been busted open like a fucking pig. Fucking cop that, you bastard. I know, I know the perfect way to end this match, too. How do you like that? Right in your dick hole. You cheating fuck. Count it, Earl. Thank you, Mr. Hebner. Oh, here we go. Would you look at that? The match is over. This is a muggy. Well, he wanted a title match, JR. And it looks like he got more than he bargained for. Yeah, no shit, King. I'm bad. Well, Despite the chance, Fuck, I love Bischoff's entrance music. Lost last week, which means that he'll be putting his belt on the line this Sunday at Bad Blood. And because the champ likes to bend the rules and get help from his friends, I'm making that title match a cage match. Oh, fuck, I don't like that. I fucking hate cage matches. The only way to win is to escape from the cage, and unfortunately, the challenger is in no shape to compete tonight, but... I struggle with the old school cage matches so much because the climbing mechanics are bullshit. Looks like Jericho's here despite the beatdown last week, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, fuck. Holy shit. I'm not at 100%, but there's no way that I'm sitting at home while Orton and A-Train have their own run of the place. Definitely not something Jericho would say. Well, if you insist... I'll give you a no disqualification match tonight against A Train. Thank and you. If the champ shows his face during that match, I'll strip him of the belt. Beautiful. I'd rather you strip him of the belt and just give it to me instead of having to endure a cage match because I'm fucking terrified now. And here comes the big hairy bitch now the A Train. Making his way to the ring. From 
at least we get to make quick work of him, just like we did with Randy Orton in the previous match. You big bitch. He's had so many iterations of himself in the WWE. A-Train, Albert, fucking Tensai, I'm pretty sure, was that Japanese-inspired one they rolled with. And not one iteration was fucking good. That speaks volumes, doesn't it, Mr. Bloom? Welcome to Raw, live tonight from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Just going to have ourselves a little Mexican standoff. I love Fort Lauderdale, JR, especially around spring break. This one has the potential to turn ugly quick. What weapons here? That's right, JR, and winning is great, but it's hard to enjoy. Good old sledgehammer. Up, Don't mind if I do. Oh! Get ourselves a cheeky Chris chair. Jericho talks a lot of trash, JR, but he can back it up too. Nice try, you big fuck. Get up, bitch. I'm not finished yet. Hey, train! You forgot to take off your shirt. Oh wait, that's not a shirt. I'm gonna punch you in the dick hole a couple of times before we're finished. Ouch! I felt that one. One more time for good measure. Why not? You big bastard! That's what you get for interfering in that match last week. Come on, big boy. Let's finish this off. Uh oh. He's really doing some damage. That's a nice little power slam you've got there. Right. Time to make this ass clown tap. Thanks for coming, A Train. You bitch. You fucking big dumb bitch. You didn't stand a chance. And no interference from Randy Orton because it would have cost him his championship. Sunday's title match is going to be a real slobber knock. Well, you're right about that one, JR. I can hardly wait. Neither can I, King. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bad Blood. With another promo vignette, which I'm sure he's going to see Chris Jericho getting his ass handed to him. Oh, look, I've been busted open. I'll probably get RKO'd in a minute as well. Oh, look, right on cue. Never want to paint me in a good light, do they, these bastards? Another forgotten pay-per-view from a bygone era. Good evening and welcome to Bad Blood live on pay-per-view. Jim Ross here with Jerry the King Lawler at ringside. And what a show we've got tonight, King. You said it, JR. A cage match for the World Heavyweight title. I'm severely fearful. Physical matchup, no doubt about it. 
I'm not understating my fear for this match, ladies and gentlemen. I'm being serious. Shawn Michaels and Rhino lose to Shelton Benjamin and Triple H in the opener. The mid card sees Chris Benoit beat Kane, and we've got a steel cage match in the main event for the World Heavyweight Championship. There he is. Will he be future champion, ladies and gentlemen? I have my doubts because I hate this fucking match type. A big bienvenue to our fans around the world from Montreal, Quebec. Jim Ross here with Jerry the I preferred the steel cages when they introduced the mechanic that you could have the side door swing open and then a mini game would ensue to crawl out. Or the iteration where you can still win by pinfall or submission within the cage as well. Because I've never been able to fucking work out how this climbing mechanic works because I can guarantee you what's going to happen here, right? I'm going to crawl up this bastard like a grandma and then Randy Orton's going to start climbing like he's a fucking Olympic climber. You watch. He's taking him to the woodshed. The only downside is we're going to have to take Orton out to a state where he's knocked out so we've got enough time to climb because I'm telling you, I'm going to climb this like I'm a geriatric. You watch. The bane of my existence, these fucking matches. See, look. That would have normally, in other games, cued a fucking little mini-game for us to do. You and we don't know the code breaker yet. Or at the very least, the lion salt. Oh, what's wrong, Orton? Are your ribs sore? You big bitch. Why won't you let me interact with that particular grapple, Orton? I don't want to have a slap battle. I want to fucking open this, the fucking door, you Randy bastard. I don't think we can. And he was born to or am I doing something wrong? WWE. He almost has an RKO up his sleeve. I'm in trouble. Uh oh. Why did he choose to attack me when he had me dead to rights? I can put you in the walls, you bastard. Even though I can't make you tap out. Climb. These competitors are some climb. of the greatest athletes you'll find in any sport. These guys are gonna tear each other apart. I might make it out. Oh fuck! Here I come. He's taking him to the woods. Oh, your ribs hurting is gonna cost me, isn't it? See what I mean? Climbing like a fucking geriatric. No, you don't. In all my years in sports entertainment, I've never seen superstars with more potential. Remind me to never try and step between these guys, JR. For fuck's sake. Uh oh. Oh, the super RKO. I'm a fucking.
And look at this. You are fucking kidding me. And the champion retains his title. I can't say I approve the way he did it, but there you go. What a load of shit. I don't even care. I ain't sticking around to watch his fucking celebration. He can get fucked. It's a little bit of a sour note to end the episode on, unfortunately, but I did give you plenty of warning. I said I sucked at fucking steel cage matches. And we have lost the ability to challenge for the title. So it looks like we're going to be thrown back into an intercontinental championship feud or storyline for the next month, and then maybe we'll get to re-challenge for the championship again. Regardless of the outcome, I do hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, do me a favor and hit that like button down below. There is a playlist for the series linked in the description if you missed yesterday's episode or you want to watch any of the other WWE playlists I have created. And make sure you hit that notification bell to get notified whenever I upload. But that's it from me, guys. I'm out of here. And as always, I will catch you guys next time. Hit subscribe, you bastards.